All right, so my name is Calandra Waters-Lake and I am the Sustainability Director. Uh, thank you for joining us. Mary Lawrence, did you want to introduce yourself? I'm sure. Um, my name is Mary Lawrence Young and I'm a senior at the college and I'm this year's chair of the Earth Week Committee. Um, yeah. So thank you all for coming. Um, we're going to be going over some information about Earth Week that will hopefully help you all plan and um, we'll have some opportunities for, um, for questions. If you could just keep yourselves muted for now, um, feel free to use the chat and, um, and we'll have again some opportunities for some discussion towards the end. Um, I wanted to start off with the basics, I, I love to take advantage of the opportunity to remind everybody what we mean when we say sustainability. Um, at William & Mary, we approach sustainability very broadly, similar to the United Nations. So if you haven't had a chance to check out the Sustainable Development Goals, I highly recommend that you go to their website. It's very user-friendly and it shows that um, sustainability is a very broad topic. Um, the way that we approach it is that it's very much about connections and about intersections. So how is the um, environment connected to society as well as things like the economy and keeping these connections in mind, how do we move towards a more sustainable world for all? Um, and one of the reasons that I, I like to start um, most meetings off with this is because sustainability can mean a little bit different things depending upon what field you're in or what industry you're in. But this is a relatively common uh, way to approach sustainability in higher education. I'm gonna hand it over to Mary Lawrence to tell you a little bit more about Earth Week. So again, I am the chair of this week's uh, or this year's Earth Week Committee. Um, and so this year, Earth Day is on Thursday, April 22nd. So William and Mary will be celebrating Earth Week the week of April 18th through the 24th. And throughout the week, the Earth Week Committee plans to facilitate all sorts of um, events and initiatives and activities, displays held by different like groups and organizations or pretty much anyone else on campus um, to give to the William & Mary community throughout the week. Um, we hope to have like a wide variety of um, events that encapsulate um, the full breadth of what sustainability, sustainability really means. Um, really Earth Week can be whatever um, the students and the faculty interested in helping out with it want it to be. Um, William & Mary Sustainability and the Earth Week Committee are there to act as a convener and a hub of the Earth Week events and initiatives and to take your ideas and help coordinate and schedule them throughout the week and help getting the word out to the William & Mary community of the various activities going on during the week. Um, and we're also there to help facilitate communication between the different groups and organizations, planning events for Earth Day and to make sure everyone has what they need for a successful event. Um, William & Mary's Sustainability's Cornerstone event this year will be a sustainability symposium in place of the usual Earth Day Festival. This symposium will be held virtually on Earth Day with a possible in-person viewing option and it will be made up of several speakers here who will be talking about their experiences with sustainability and the environment and all sorts of really interesting things. I'm really excited about this. Um, so as you know, um, many events are virtual this year due to COVID. So here are some key guidelines you need to consult when planning both virtual and especially in-person events for Earth Week. Um, this PowerPoint will be posted to the William & Mary website, um, Earth Week website later on, and we'll send it out to you guys as well, so you can access the links there. Um, just remember to be flexible this year when planning events, because we really don't know what the world's going to look like in two months. By then, we could be entirely virtual. Um, I really hope we're not, but we really just don't know. So if you do plan an in-person event, just make sure you consult the guidelines on the last slide. Try for outside when possible. It will be in April, so hopefully the weather will be nice and maybe have a virtual backup plan just in case. Um, and remember that virtual events are really great too. Um, they reach a much broader audience and allow students at home to participate and still feel connected to the student body. However, if you do plan a virtual event, please use a waiting room or a password um, for your event and have a registration for students to fill out. Uh, so like Mary Lawrence um, just indicated, there's a, a real good push for doing things virtually and a lot of reasons to do that. Um, 
I wanted to go over just some of the, the options if you are doing something in person um, or you're doing something that's maybe online with a in-person viewing option. Um, these links are also active. And one of the first um, places you should go is probably the scheduling office online. And they have a lot of resources there as well. Just keep in mind that the scheduling office handles um, a lot of the locations on campus, but they don't handle all of them. So if you're looking at something that is at a graduate school, all the graduate schools for the most part have their own um, scheduling and their own guidelines. So just make sure to reach out to them uh, at an individual basis. When it comes to parking, they are um, a great resource. They're also where you can get passes, um, where you can get information about accessibility. And if you're setting something up, um, egress is really important. So the ability of people and particularly emergency vehicles to be able to get through high traffic areas. Um, and so parking services can also provide feedback on um, what's a, a good setup for an event to provide some of that necessary egress. Um, when it comes to food, again, at the, the moment that we're not encouraging food at um, events, but Dining Sustainability does have um, compostables that you can reach out to them about obtaining. They are also the ones that coordinate the compost bins on campus. Um, and if your event is outdoors and you think it's going to be creating trash or recycling, uh, you can go to this link. You're basically just placing a work order to have trash and recycling bins dropped off by facilities and picked up. Um, so these logistics uh, account for planning all types of events, not just Earth Week events. As some of them are probably a little more pertinent to a non-COVID uh, situation, but still they'll be part of this presentation so that you have access to these and can reference them moving forward. A few other resources that we've pulled together as you're starting to think about your, your Earth Week events. Um, we really encourage you to consider the whole breadth of sustainability. It's a lot of fun and uh, easy to start focusing on the environmental side. I mean, it is Earth Day that we are celebrating, but don't forget that there are a lot of aspects to um, conservation, to environmentalism. There's a lot of uh, social aspects, livelihoods, things that you can really um, bring in multiple dimensions that will help make your event even better. Um, it will also allow you to collaborate with others and particularly during these times, um, collaborating for impact is extremely useful and better to work with others and be able to reach a larger audience than try to go something alone or end up accidentally competing with a different group um, scheduling something similar or at the same time. Um, some of these resources will hopefully help you. Um, the Office of Community Engagement and um, Student Leadership Development just put together this campus activism and advocacy resource. It just came out a couple of weeks ago and it's an outstanding resource that provides a lot of guidance as well as university policies. Um, there's also the Parks RX um, or Parks Research Lab campus green space map. And then we have a green events guide. This green events guide does have some tips that will be useful um, for planning events this semester, but I will say that a lot of that green events guide was also focused on in-person um, events and how to reduce your, your sort of footprint around that, um, but still, still worth checking out. Um, we pulled together these resources, but I feel like there are probably more out there. If you have any suggestions for others that you think we could add to this list, uh, feel free to drop them in the chat box or shoot us an email. We would love to crowdsource some more ideas. Um, I'm, sure, I'm sure there are some that we are not thinking of. Mary Lawrence? Um, so this is a um, form where you can register any potential event ideas you have. Um, the link is in the PowerPoint, but I'm gonna put it in the chat as well. Um, and you can just fill it out um, with what you wanna do um, the contact information for the person who we can we can talk um, communicate with about the event, um, a description about the event, um, and if you need anything like, or you're looking for volunteers or funds or um, 
any collaborators of any sort. You'll see that all in the Google form, which I just sent out. Yeah, and Mary Lawrence did a, a good job at the beginning describing kind of the role that we play um, within Earth Week. And so as our, our role as a convener and a hub, um, we want to be able to try and connect people who are thinking about Earth Week events now, um, particularly if maybe you're thinking about something that's very similar to someone else, or maybe what you were thinking of would be a great compliment to someone else, or you've got a great idea, but you're maybe missing something along the way looking for partners. Um, so we're piloting um, this right now where you would register your idea. It will hopefully be a, a pretty serious idea, something you've put some thought into, but doesn't have to be 100%. Um, I'm definitely doing this kind of thing. Um, and so we'll, we'll crowdsource some of these ideas and then see if there's some cross pollination that can be made um, between these and, and we'll see how it goes. We'd love any type of feedback if you all have suggestions on ways to do this moving forward because we really like seeing a, a large diversity of events taking place um, during Earth Week. And so we are trying to stop people from perhaps scheduling things at the same time, doing similar things uh, separately, um, and really just trying to make the most out of your Earth Week uh, events as possible. Uh, when it comes to advertising, one of the ways that we are acting as a hub is on William and Mary calendar events. Uh, there is a calendar specifically created for Earth Week. And so you can register your event on that calendar. And what we will be doing is we will be pulling all of the events that are registered on there for Earth Week um, onto our website. And then we will also be pulling events out of that to include in our marketing for Earth Week. So we'll be um, marketing on social media and things of that nature. Feel free to tag us in things and we will reshare. Um, so the hope is that we can just amplify what you all are doing and act as one location um, for people to go to to find out what are their options um, during Earth Week to view or participate, that sort of thing. And I would, um, I would really encourage you to think broadly on that. I, I know it's different not having as many in-person options, but we do have students on campus. We also have students that are virtual. Virtual does allow um, some new doors to be opened as far as audience or who maybe you could get to, to speak or those sorts of things without having to, to pay for someone to travel. Um, so there are a lot of opportunities out there um, to cr think creatively, um, perhaps not so much about large gatherings of folks, but even things like displays or challenges. There's, there's really a lot that could be done around this. Um, so in order to be featured on the hub, you do need to register your event on this Women Mary events calendar. And uh, you can do that by just going to the Women Mary um, homepage and you go up to the top and it has an events link. Um, you can click into that and um, create your event and then just tag our calendar um, towards the end as you're kind of wrapping things up. If you need help doing this, just let us know and we'd be happy to walk you through it. Um, unfortunately, William & Mary's event calendar and the Tribe Lake calendar do not talk to each other. Uh, so you can put your event on Tribe Link, that's great, but you'll have to also post it on the William & Mary events calendar in order for it to be featured um, in our advertising and on the website. These are some of the links to stay in contact with us. Um, we have a weekly list serve. We also, of course, have all our social media platforms and there's a link to our website um, down at the bottom. So um, if you'd like to stay in the loop on sustainability initiatives in general, or you are um, looking for some assistance or help with any of these things, um, feel free to reach out to Mary Lawrence and I um, moving forward. And that's it for the formal part of our presentation. Um, 